Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF Qualified Auditing Audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic. What exactly is this embedded software in the automotive sector? Well, in general, uh, if you take a very simple example, you think about a bread. Now, it's a plain bread. Now, we don't categorize into anything. But now, you have a filling of some vegetables in that. Now, we can say that it's some vegetable bread. But then, in case you put some chicken into that, now we can say that now it is a non-vegetarian bread. Something similar is with the embedded software. Because when we talk about embedded software, we need to say that we embed something into a particular thing and that's why it is called an embedded software because it is serving a particular purpose say for example very commonly you must have seen that uh, there may be a car which is running on the road but it's a flat tire and somebody has to tell that person that oh you have a flat tire why don't you stop the car and uh, get it changed but why it is happening because the person while driving can do not know that the, there's no air in the tire so by using embedded software there can be a small sensor which can be fitted in the tire. So whenever there is low pressure of air in the tire, automatically on the dashboard, there can be some marking which will come, some signal will come that can indicate that yes, some problem is there. Or maybe a very another simple example that you are driving a car and somebody is on the side comes and tells you that the door is not closed properly. But there can be an embedded software on the door which can give a signal to you or maybe the car will not start unless and until the doors are properly closed. So these all are very easy and simple example with respect to the embedded software or maybe as simple as this mouse. Now it does not have any wireless and any wire but still it can be used with a laptop. So why? Because there is a specific software which is inside this which is linking with a laptop and so that it is working there. To talk about a specific definition as per IATA 16949. So as per the definition of uh, uh, embedded software it is a specialized program to store in a automotive component which is specified by the customer or maybe as a part of a system design to control its function and one thing which is very important is that it should be relevant as per IATA 16949 in case we are using it for that for the very first time in 1968 Volkswagen started using the embedded software and since then, you know, in all our vehicles, you can find different kind of embedded software. On an average, approximately there are more than 100 different ECUs, electronic control units, who are specifically working for different functions in the, any particular vehicle. To give a, a little bit more example, to make more clarity about the embedded software, uh, let's take an example of a PCB, printed circuit board. Now, if you see a printed circuit board, it's a plain thing, nothing is there. Now, you put some components into it, microprocessor, transistor, resistors, capacitors and all that, right? That is part number two. Now, the third thing is that how that microprocessor will work. So, you put a software into that microchip and now that is called an embedded software. So, here you can categorize between a simple component that is PCB, then something which is incorporated into it in different electronic parts and then you put a software so that it can do a particular function. To talk a little bit more with respect to the embedded software, if you look into the details about it that how it can be used. So, if you see in industry it is used in different kind of processes and different products like it can be used in cars, for the toys, for appliances like washing machine, security system like central locking, maybe in the pacemaker to save our life, then TV for the remote, set up boxes for entertainment, digital watches, missiles and you can think about anything and you will find it there. Now that brings another question that if there is any difference between embedded software and the application software. When I say application software, it means I am talking about some operating system through which our laptop or the desktop is actually working. So there are few key difference which can differentiate from embedded software with an application software. So the first and the foremost is that it is a fixed software with a certain capability which can be used for a particular purpose. So for example, I just give the example of a mouse that that software is only going to help that uh, how we can use a mouse and no other function can be done with respect to that. Another thing is that it is less visible but it's not less complicated, it can be very complicated because we cannot see a software 
but then we know that how it is functioning and then another important thing is that we cannot make any addition with respect to any other hardware or any software it's a very controlled thing which is there on a particular product and we cannot have any real time changes that we can do like you know in the case of uh, any machine wherein we can make some changes online by changing the software and all that that's not very easily possible in case of an embedded software and it is specifically dedicated to a specific task if i talk with respect to iit of 16949 it's very important to understand that at the moment when we talk about embedded software we are not talking with respect to the software which is there on the cnc machine or other spms at this moment when we are talking with respect to ietf it is primarily with respect to the product which is finally going to be fitted in any car or any two wheeler or three wheeler there this application is there with respect to embedded software now that brings another important question because sometimes there is some confusion that what is the difference between embedded software and embedded system so i gave a very simple example earlier with respect to pcb so when we are talking about pc with mounted electronic components and everything like software that is called an embedded system but when we talk only with respect to a software then it is called embedded software so in a way embedded software is a subset of embedded system now that brings another important thing that as per iit of 16949 which are the different clauses where we are talking with respect to the embedded software so it starts with clause number 8.3 which is with respect to the new product development process so first the most important requirement that is coming up with respect to the standard is wherein they are talking about the development of products with embedded software and there the requirement is that the organization should have a system of any self assessment and it can be done either through a, a process called automotive spice or cmmi that is one thing the second thing with respect to the standard is about the product design input now these design inputs can come either from the customer or maybe during the part of new product development it can be initiated by the organization as per the requirement of the customer the third clause which is there is which is about the product validation now we have made everything now we also need to check that whether this software is working properly or not say for example we have a embedded software with respect to the wiper movement that whenever there is a rain automatically the wiper will start moving so during the product validation we will check that whether during that time the wiper is actually moving whenever there is some water which is coming there or not or maybe another simple example could be that uh, there is an embedded software on the rear view mirror that whenever any light is coming from the back it reduces the reflectivity so that the person is driving the car does not face any problem on the eyes so whether that embedded software is working or not that can be something which can be checked during the time of validation then another important aspect is with respect to the design and development changes just like any other change which is happening in the product or in the process there can be some changes which can happen in the software also so do we have a proper engineering change process with respect to the software also whatever coding that we are changing any revision number is there that needs to be seen then at times it happens that we are also purchasing some components from the supplier which may be embedded with some software so in that particular case wherever we are buying any particular component with a the software then do the supplier has got an assessment process internally wherein they are verifying that whatever software they are putting it is fulfilling all the requirements or not and then finally the most important is clause number 10 at 10.2.6 wherein we are talking with respect to the customer complaint and the failure test analysis that in case uh, any failure is happening because of the software so for example we have a engine control unit which is monitoring the flow of uh, oil the petrol or diesel into the engine and there is some problem with respect to the emission so maybe we can check our ecu that whether it is performing correctly and it is giving the correct amount of petrol or diesel or it is giving more which may be resulting in lot of pollution there so that can be one test which can be done as a part of customer complaint to talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to embedded software the first and the foremost is how often the organizations are actually clear about that what exactly is the requirement with respect to the embedded software and what exactly is an embedded software the second important thing is that even though the companies are using embedded software how often they are having a self assessment model to verify that whether they are fulfilling all the requirements as per iit of 16949 or not and the third and the most important thing is that whatever 
software that they are being using are they making sure that while doing an internal audit or an external audit by second party or third party order we are actually checking that what are the controls that organization is having with respect to the embedded software so if i do a summary i talked about what exactly is an embedded software how it is different from uh, another software which is called an application software then what is the difference between embedded system and embedded software then which are the different clauses as per iit of 1694 and where exactly it is being used and what are the industry challenges that we are facing with respect to embedded software my next video will again will be similar in this line and here i'm going to talk about another new requirement from iitf with respect to the cyber security and cyber attack regularly i'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping me to understand your expectation so please do continue that and in case you want to understand about this particular video a little bit in more detail you'll find a link there when you click there you find a blog and there you'll find this information in much more detail and in case you are liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.